Speaker to the House. I call Julianne Genta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Green Party supports this bill, and more importantly, we support the role of public broadcasting in creating a healthy, strong democracy. And I have to say that we have a vision for a well-funded, high-quality, multi-platform public broadcasting environment where New Zealand stories, voices are seen and heard. We don't want our children in New Zealand all growing up with accents like mine, just because there's a lack of uh, New Zealand content on television or on the radio. New Zealand, radio New Zealand is currently our only public broadcasting entity. And they do a great job in very tight circumstances. But I have to say that this bill, while we can support it, truly is just around the margins and is not taking the steps that we need to fulfill this vision we have of well-funded, high-quality public broadcasting in New Zealand. This bill has been languishing uh, in, you know, not coming back to the House for a very, very long time. It was in front of the Select Committee in 2009. It got a single submission because it wasn't that controversial. Um, and it's taken that many years to come back to this House for the third reading. And at a time of massive change to broadcasting and journalism, increasing globalization, an age where information is more free and yet at the same time more siloed than ever before, and the public is more disengaged with our democracy, the best thing that we can say about public broadcasting, about Nationals' eight years in this portfolio, is this uncontroversial bill that should have been passed uh, seven years ago. It's really the only thing they've done on the positive side of the ledger when it comes to public broadcasting. We can say they've done a bit on the negative side. We've had the funding freeze for Radio New Zealand basically since National came to power, which is actually a substantial cut uh, to their real operating budget. And they've, they've managed to, to still provide probably the best, most insightful, critical journalism um, that's out there in New Zealand, despite these budget cuts. Um, but we've seen the, cut, the, the complete removal of non-commercial television uh, in New Zealand with um, National Killing TV and NZ6 and 7. Um, all this bill does is update the charter, which is part of the normal five-yearly statutory review. This started in 2005, and it's now 11 years later. Over eight of those 11 years, we've seen the impacts on Radio New Zealand of the funding freeze. Um, I know that at the committee, my colleague, Gareth Hughes, asked why um, the government wasn't even bothering to ask for it, or why Radio New Zealand wasn't bothering to ask for additional funding, given that they've had this annual operating deficit of 1.4 million, and further deficits are forecast. Capital spending is five to 10 years behind, um, and estimates of the real-term funding cut is in the order of four to six million dollars each year. The answer, according to my colleague Gareth Hughes, is that it's pointless beating your head against a brick wall. And so there it is. Uh, the government's approach, National's approach to public broadcasting is a brick wall, which isn't too surprising because uh, having an informed electorate and a, a broad and, and deep debate on the merits of policy solutions for our country is not in the interests of this national government. It's simply not. It's not. Um, you know, if it were, we could have a debate about policy, and maybe they would be supportive of public broadcasting. Uh, but they find it easier to win elections on a few silly slogans, um, and they love going on the commercial radio stations and playing up the different personalities of people in their caucus, rather than debating whether or not policies are going to achieve what they say they are. Ironically, the government did blow $26 million of taxpayers' money on a failed flag legacy campaign 
um, supposedly to have a conversation about who we are in the world, but they won't adequately fund Radio New Zealand, one of the major cornerstones of our public culture. They wouldn't fund TVNZ7, the only non-commercial television station that we had, um, when that would have cost $15 million a year. But they could find $26 million for uh, the flag referendum, where we were trying to um, replace, rather than have a real debate about our Constitution, let's just replace um, the Union Jack with a silver fern to represent our love of rugby. Order, this order, come back. The Greens believe that Kiwis deserve high quality broadcasting here in New Zealand. No one else is going to provide it. This government is clearly not going to provide it. Um, but the commercial, commercial media simply isn't able to deliver the level of debate and investigative journalism that is necessary to have a healthy democracy. We know that the commercial imperatives of uh, of simply will not deliver the funding that is needed for quality journalism. It is public good. And I know National doesn't understand the concept of public good. They think if it can't be commercialized, it's not worth having. And you can hear that very clearly. They think that dollars are the only um, evidence of something being of value, when in fact there are many things that are of value to New Zealanders that don't make money. And one of those things is democracy. Um, the argument that we can't afford to have quality public broadcasting in New Zealand is the same as saying we can't afford to have elections, because it is that essential to the functioning of democracy. This is really about choice. The government has chosen to be a brick wall on public broadcasting, but it does find the money to subsidize smelters, oil drilling, casinos. Ultimately, that's their agenda. If we don't fund public broadcasting adequately, then what will happen is we don't have the information that voters need to make the choices about who they want running the country and which policies are going to best achieve the New Zealand that they aspire to have. So we, we can support this bill. Um, it's well overdue. It doesn't really make a difference one way or the other. I mean, I guess it's great that we still have Radio New Zealand. I wouldn't be surprised in a fourth term national government if uh, Stephen Joyce got his way. And we didn't have Radio New Zealand. We flogged it off and simply had commercial uh, radio and television because that makes it easier for National to hide the fact from New Zealanders that they are letting them down and that they're looking after their rich mates and big business and overseas multinationals. That's the agenda of the National Party. I call Tracy Martin.